Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today I wanted to discuss with you guys the best line, at least the one that I believe is the best line for new players. Now, uh, this is a question I get asked quite often, and I actually used to give a different answer to the one I'm about to give you guys. Now, if you asked me about a year ago, uh, well, actually about a year and a half ago, what would be the battleship line that I would recommend to beginners? And not necessarily beginners of World of Warships, but beginners of battleships. And I would would have said about a year and a half to two years ago, I said the German line. They're a very forgiving class. The armor is great. The guns aren't all that accurate. And at the time, they were the, by far the worst uh, in the accuracy department for any of the battleships at the time. Um, which meant that you experienced the worst accuracy first in any other line you picked after that. You, the dispersion was much better and you could you know improve that way and then a lot of stuff happened and we are where we are today with the state of water warships um uh, he spam uh like it or not has increased tremendously since those days engagement ranges are much uh, further out Wargaming pretty much admitted that when they finally buffed the dispersion of the German battleships. And we live in a world of a renewed CV generation all where they aren't as rare as they were before, but they're not everywhere, but they're rather quite pesky when, they're, when they are there. So my answer has gone from the German line to now the American line, the line that I started with. So... The American lines, let's, let's, let's go over it. What is the American lines thing? What's its gimmick? Well, it doesn't have one really. It used to, but doesn't anymore. And by gimmick, I mean each line has its own flavor or something about that stands out from a part of the rest of the ships in a similar, in, in the same class. So. For example, the French battleships, they're fast. Um, from tier 8 on up, they have really good secondaries. And the Germans, well, they have fantastic secondaries, fantastic armor for close range uh, brawling, and their guns used to not be all that accurate, but now they're pretty okay now. Uh, the Soviet battleships, none of them existed. The Japanese battleships, they usually have big guns for their tier, and from mid-tier to tier 8 they're pretty fast more like battle cruisers and they mostly run around the back of the map but the tier 9 to, not, well, not, but the tier 9 and the tier 10 they're mostly stationary tankers with massive guns uh, the um, British battleships they're made of paper but from tier 9 and tier 10 they have lull hills uh, good HE pretty decent rate of fire the American lines flavor used to be good AA and they were the fastest battleships in the game. Then the British battleships came out and Conqueror had for a time, uh, God knows what it is now, um, the best AA in the game and there were a couple of differences between Conqueror's AA mostly being a longer range AA and Monty's AA was most more concentrated in mid to close range AA, so there was some arguments there, but it was a ship that whose AA could rival Montana's quite easily, and I did testing with them back to back, and they both shot down, shot down a number number of planes when I would slam the training room full of twelve midways. There's an old video on my channel where I experimented with that, but it's much different now. So anyway, today AA we don't really know, but there are now several ships whose AA, depending upon their build, could Rival and outperform Monty's, uh, Conqueror, Republic with the proper build, and the Kremlin, of course, has a A rating of 100 already before you even touch it. So, there's that. And the fastest ships. The Iowa, for a very long time, used to be the fastest battleship in the game, and this was historically accurate. Then the Frenchies got here, and they got the engine boost consumable, and well, they were faster than the Iowa. The Alsace was faster than the Iowa with its speed boost activated. Well, then we got the Georgia, who can go almost 40 knots now. So that's kind of a proto-Iowa design. So it's kind of came back to America, but that's a premium ship. And a tech line ship. 
So yeah, that was the two main flavors of the American Battleship line, and it's no longer like that now. So what are the American Battleships like now? Well, they still have those traits, but they're no, no longer the best in those categories. They do have good AA, and they do have fast battleships from Tier 8, Tier 9, and Tier 10, but they're no longer the fastest. Well, the Iowa is no longer the fastest. The Monte was never the fastest anyway. It's, you know, it's capped out at 30 knots. But what the American Battleship line does have going for it is that if you start there, you will learn the basics of battleships very, very, very quickly. And what I mean by when I say the basics is that you learn important things like bow tanking, switching between HE and AP, which I, I did kind of ignore, but especially nowadays, they, they will teach you that. Um, angling, not showing your side, not showing broadside. The meta has, ironically, kind of come full, full circle, cir circle, and now it's back to mostly bow tanking now and staying at mid to long ranges which the American battleships are quite good at mid to close range, so mid to long range it's still workable for the Americans. Now, from tiers 5, and I'm not really going to talk about uh, 3 and 4 because you really won't be spending a long time there, but from tier 5 through tier 7, American battleships are super dreadnoughts. They're very slow. They, for the most part, have large guns for their tier, and they're quite tanky for their tier. So, that's all well and good, and it's pretty forgiving in most places. Most of the American ships are quite hard to Citadel. Colorado and New Mexico especially are pretty dang tanky. Now, I haven't played a lot of Tier 6 and Tier 7 be uh, with all the introduction of the new ships and battleships and such, but when I do play them, they still feel quite similar. Maybe not as tanky as they, as they were when I went through them, but they, they still feel quite solid today. Um, the New Mexico, I'm sorry, you're going to have to deal with that thing. <laughs> While it does have 10 guns, 10 14-inch guns to tier 5, it's slow. The guns take a year and a half to traverse uh, 180. But when you do get all those guns on target, and if you're playing it at, at mid to long range, just like the, like the uh, Texas kind of designed to play at, since you do get that spotter plane, you can get your range way out there with that spotter plane. It, it does its job. But again, it's only the tier 5, you won't be there for that long. The tier 6, New Mexico, fantastic ship. Uh, 12 14-inch guns that are fairly accurate for tier 6. Tanky as heck. There's times when I'm in a tier 8 ship fighting against New Mexico, and I still have trouble citadeling it because the thing is just so well armored, and if they angled correctly, they will just laugh at you most of the time. And the tier 7, the Colorado, this is by far one of the ships I used to hate the most when I played through it. It's a tier 7 ship, stuck at 20 knots, very slow, but you do have 8 16 inch guns at tier 7. It's pretty good. You can overmatch pretty much anything when you're top tier. Well, you can't overmatch everything when you're top tier. But the issues come when it gets up to, to tier 9. And you, yes, you have 16 inch guns, so you're okay there. But you're in a ship that has a top speed of 21 knots. So... That kind of sucks, not going to lie. But all of that is worth it when you break through to the North Carolina. The North Carolina is one of my favorite ships. And unfortunately, I don't have one anymore because I got desperate and sold her and never bought her back. And I'm, I don't have enough port slots. And I'm a, I throw my credit card at ships for some reason I'm really stingy with the port slots. But I do have ships like the Alabama and the Massachusetts, which are pretty dang similar to North Carolina. So North Carolina, she goes 28 knots. It's... The first fast battleship in the American line, and this is where you really start to learn. The North Carolina teaches you that you need to bow tank because her sides are extremely squishy, and she does have pretty accurate guns. The tier nine, uh, tier eight, tier nine, and tier ten American battleships have pretty accurate guns for the most part. I mean, of course, every now and then you get a really screwy dispersion, but that happens to every line, and I do find it to be really quite accurate. And you can fit a special module that only the American battleships have. Spain Body Mod 3, and it cranks your dispersion down even more. So when RNG just is nice, you get some lovely, lovely salvos out of it. So the North Carolina, great ship, fast ship. You bow tank. This is, this is especially when you learn to switch to AP. I mean, switch to HE from time to time, because when you're about taking situations, you're going to want to start to light some fires on the enemy ship and hopefully force them to turn or run away or back up from you to where you can use your AP and really 
start to tear into him. Now, the American AP, you hear a lot of people say that it's slow. And yes, it is slow. It's in, I think the, the North Carolina is like 702 meters a second, and then the Iowa and the Montana is like 750-ish, I believe, which is extremely slow, I'm not going to lie. But that's also a strength, in my opinion, because the slower it goes, that means it has a better chance of pinning on cruisers. Now, when you get to the Iowa and to the Montana, these ships are fantastic for dunking on cruisers. And Iowa's just a stretched out North Carolina with a slightly more protected citadel, and it goes 32 knots, 34 knots with the speed flag, I believe, or 33.7. It goes pretty dang fast. And you have 16 inch guns, but instead of the 45 caliber of the North Carolina, they're 50 caliber, hence the more velocity on the shells. So the shells, they're 16 inch guns, which is not that big anymore by tier 9 standards. It used to be okay, but now it's it's not that big because we've got some crazy ships now. But still, they're very good for dealing with cruisers and in the current meta of ships like Smolensk, Usta, the uh, American battleships are some of the best battleships to deal with these ships because the AP, yes, it's only 16 inch guns. Yes, it's slow, but put that together it's a great combination for piercing cruisers and slapping them. And not to mention that when battleships do mess up and give you their broadside, you can have your way with them. Plus, with the accuracy of the American battleships, once you get it within like 15, 13-ish kilometers of another battleship, it's over for them. Because with the Iowa especially, it's a very maneuverable ship. Get around to the side of anything, just blap the crap out of it. You may not kill it straight out, but you're going to hurt the crap out of it. Now, if it's something like a Yammy, you are going to kill it straight out. If it's the same thing with an exposed Citadel, Yammy, the Conqueror. Now, the Kremlin, maybe if you can manage to hit it in the right spot, but still, the thing has so much health, you probably won't outright delete it, but you will You will make him reconsider doing, uh, letting you get that close again. Um, so, you can still do that in an American battleship. And when you get to the Montana, it's a bigger Iowa with another turret. Now, the Montana is, I'm not going to lie, a bit underwhelming by today's standards. It is one of the oldest ships in the game. Hasn't received too many buffs besides the, um, they, they did lower the Citadel. And it is getting, uh, it's either getting or it's gotten the health buff. I don't think it's gotten it yet. No, it did. It did get it in this update. I'm surprised I didn't notice that when I was playing it in this clip. All right, but yeah, because it's supposed to be the same update as the Henry. Yeah, yeah, so it did get that hit that um, repair poor debuff. I can't believe I missed that when I was playing, uh, recording the footage you're seeing now for this clip. But the Mani is underwhelming, but it's still a perfectly capable ship. When played at mid-range and when you know what targets you need to pick and picking on cruisers, you can still do quite fine in the Montana. Now keep in mind, this is just the beginning. I'm not saying this is like the lot, the battleship line. No, you start from here, you learn the basics with the American battleships, and then you move on to your next one. After the Americans, I would then suggest moving on to the Germans. Because the Germans now have the same dispersion ellipse as the American battleships. You can feel very comfortable with, this, with the dispersion there, because it's literally the same. And then from there on, then you can go and choose which battleship lines you want to based upon your interests. So... That's my opinion on this subject, American Battleship Line. You learn the basics real easy with them. And remember, you learn by learning from your mistakes. And if you slip up in a North Carolina and show your broadside when you're not supposed to, then you're going to get hurt and you're going to learn real fast. And honestly, today, that is still one of the biggest mistakes I see Battleship players making, myself included, is we slip up, we show too much broadside, bang, there goes our health. So... That's my suggestion to you guys, to you guys that may be getting to battleships. Um, you guys that have been here already, what do you think? What would be your recommendation? I know a lot of you would just say the frickin' Russians because Russian bias right now, but I'm looking for from an aspect of learning how to play them properly and not rely on bias. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We are on our way to 8,000 subs now. Can I thank you guys enough for that? Hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.